What's up guys? So, my phone, not yours. Henry X is the newest mod from Henry Repeating Arms, and it fully embraces what we, the consumer, has been asking for. The predication for this build was the release of the side gate loading models early last year. The Henry X is offered in a suite of calibers, including 357 Magnum, 45 LC, 44 Mag, 410 Shotgun, and this one is in 4570 Government. Working our way back to front, the rifle comes fitted with a generous rubber butt pad to reduce recoil and felt weight. And that pad is mounted on murdered out synthetic furniture. This leads into the action which is composed of an aggressively serrated hammer and a big loop for ease of operation. The receiver is drilled and tapped to accept after factory scope bases. And while it does have side loading capabilities, the removable magazine tube is still included for mass loading. The barrel is a round profile 19.8 inch 1 inch 20 twist barrel that has been fitted with high visibility fiber optic sights. And my favorite feature, that barrel comes threaded 5 8 24 for compatibility with cans. Rounding the gun out is a synthetic handguard with both two sections of M-Lock and a molded pick rail and the ideal location for mounting of a bipod. All this brings the gun in at just about 7.5 pounds for a lightweight modular brush setup. Sorry guys and gals, that was my buddy Cam, and Cam is one of those guys that when he calls you pick up. He's just good people, and he's brought us up to dark time, uh, which is what I was trying to say before, is now we're gonna test the Henry X suppressed versus unsuppressed at night, and we're gonna be using uh, some of the hunting ammunition that I use because the way I think about it is we should try to be as realistic to what we would be shooting towards dark anyway with something like this and uh, that's what we're going to do. Man, they, they got some snap. You guys have heard many a time about Bowers Group on the channel. We are huge fans of Bowers Group. They make some just absolutely excellent cans. Can't see anything. Well, I have to say, I don't know what it looks like on the IR, but I'll say this. It's a lot more pleasant with the suppressor on the end of it, as in a, I want to say like a 50% recoil reduction. I mean, I have no way to quantify that right now, but I would say there's substantial recoil reduction, and I didn't see a whole lot coming out of the end of the can. Of course, the IR will tell you guys have a better picture at this point in time than I do, but let's continue with the rest of the stuff that we're doing for the Henry X. So upon finishing our shoot today, I've realized that I am an idiot and I did not wear my eye protection. Don't be like me. Put on your eye protection. We're just fire forming some brass that we're gonna use later in the video and collecting some chronograph data while we're at it. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and start shooting with the uh, Lehigh Extreme Hunter 325 grain loaded by Underwood Ammunition. Since Curtis failed to uh, turn on the camera last time to capture the kinetics of us shooting these shootsteel.com gongs, we're going to go ahead and do it again. Because it's out of the box, right? It's out of the box. Last two rounds in the box. 
Why take a box home? <laughs> oh no, you missed! Cue dramatic music. <laughs> Dude, it didn't like sort of fall down. <laughs> it crushed it. Like there was some velocity to that. I've got an idea. May the odds ever be in your favor. It's smoking. <laughs> All right, guys and gals. Well, because it is basically the apocalypse right now, I thought that we would do something a little bit different, something outside my comfort zone, and that is do some reloads. I don't reload. Uh, I used to when I was a starving college student. Since then, I have found better applications for my time than sitting at a bench, and I actually don't even have any reloading equipment anymore. But because we need some niche loadings to get some subsonic ammunition for this particular rifle, I went ahead and did a little bit of digging. And why this is gonna be different is we're not gonna be using smokeless powder. We're gonna be using black powder or a black powder complement. And basically my premise was, what can I walk into the store and buy right now? And that's exactly what I did. So I went with a Pyrodex, a, uh, it's basically a black powder analog. And not suggested for this, by the way. We did some load development with some gnashing of teeth, I might add. What are we doing, Bacon? Why do we have a disassembled 4570? That's a guy who questions who's, ever, who's reloaded something before. Just do it yourself. Be an idiot. Go backwards. We got what I believe is going to be a subsonic load. I am going to give credit for the procedure that I use to make these loads to the Cap and Ball channel. If you guys are unfamiliar with Cap and Ball, he's actually a European and he shoots a lot, a lot of black powder stuff. He didn't have anything to do with this video. I just happened to see his stuff. I really like watching it and I took his method to make these rounds. So what we're gonna do first off is chronograph three of them and see if we're under the sound barrier or how close we are to it. But before we're gonna do that, uh, let's talk about the bullets real quick. I wanted to originally go with these. And these are Lehigh Defense 465 grain. And you can see that those are big honking mothers. The only problem with these is when you load them, you run out of space in the case for the amount of black powder that you need to put in the case. And their overall length ends up so long that they really can't work in this lever gun. So these are more for single shot. We wanted to try them. Uh, unfortunately, we can't get her to go and the gun actually works. So we had to go away from the 465 and what we did instead was we went for the 325 grain. You guys have seen them here before. These are the Extreme Hunter, or I think they also make a loading that is the Extreme Defender, but basically it's a fluid dynamics copper spun bullet. And this is, these things are great. We went on a bear hunt with them. They're very, very effective, but I've subloaded them with black powder or black powder complement. So we're gonna see how they go, but to lead off, we're gonna go ahead and get, I have some factory loads and these should be spanking out at 325 grains, or excuse me, 325 grain, 20, 30 feet per second. And these are an Underwood ammunition load, which Underwood is known for making some hot stuff. So to lead off, we're just gonna pipe one of these and see what we've got on the chronograph and then we'll take three of my homebrew and see what they'll do. I need to shut my phone down. Uh, factory load. And they're spanking out there. I fire formed this brass, you guys saw that earlier in the video. And they just need a little bit of assistance to get in there. Let's see what we've got going on here. <laughs> 957 with a hit on the steel, I might add. <laughs> we'll collect that brass here in just a second. That is really pleasant. I think you guys can probably hear the difference there. Here we go. <laughs> 1092. <laughs> one more, one more, just for fun. Here we go. Or, excuse me, this is for science. This is totally for science. Here we go. Eleven eighteen, 
We've got a lot of spread, obviously. Uh, that's probably one of the reasons that Pyrodex is not suggested for black powder loads, uh, because it's a little bit more dilute. Anybody who's not familiar, uh, a Pyrodex is kind of like something they put on the market so that you can't just get a keg of black powder and blow up a building or something like that. So Pyrodex is kind of the munitions grade stuff for uh, citizen ownership, if you will. They've, they've dumbed it down a little bit and it needs to be pressurized and a bunch of other stuff. But anyway, I'm gonna go ahead and take the rest of these loads and let's shoot some targets. So by my count, I should have exactly enough hand loads to knock down all those pepper poppers, assuming that I don't miss. So let's go ahead and get to it, see what we can do. I am gonna hand cycle them and put them in the action because uh, the overall length is just a little bit long and they need just a little bit of extra help. And I think that it might be a problem if we start using the action of the gun, but we're gonna just gonna run it like a single shot. Here we go. <laughs> now lever guns, remember guys, you gotta go all the way up into the chamber for a lever gun. Uh oh, second effort, bingo. Oops, maybe the crimp was a little bit bad on that one, I don't know. I will say this, we do have some suppressor mirage starting to come off of this guy. I would say that we should probably uh, increase the height of those sights ever so slightly to avoid that. Here we go. <laughs> like a pumpkin. Ooh, that sounded bad. We're gonna move the camera a little bit. Last one, guys. Last one. Got him. <laughs> oh man, that is super fun. And it's really nice because we've got big heavy bullets that are going down range, still crushing the heck out of the target, yet they are subsonic so that we don't have a lot of that extra supersonic crack going on. This was our look at the Henry X in 4570. I hope that you guys had a good time watching this video. I had a really good time making it. Please sound off in the comment section down below if you guys found it interesting and or informative. And if you're new here, then please consider supporting the VSO Gun channel on Patreon or Subscribestar. Hopefully we'll see you guys on a future video. The recoil reduction is so high because of the can. It would be a boozer. <laughs> a what? A boozer. A boozer? Nobody can see what's going on <laughs> except for Bacon trying to balance a gun here. <laughs> Surprisingly well balanced with a can on the end of it. <laughs> yeah, whatever, bro. It's right underneath the the support hand. No, it is. I mean, it's not, it's not outrageous. A lot of times you have to go all the way to the front to get it.